market. Uh, earlier we have talked about the different data types we have in Java. Uh, we have talked about integer, char, float, double and all the other data types. We have also talked about strings which is nothing but a group of characters clumped together. Right? So in any of these data type declarations, how many values can you store at a time? Only one. So for example, you have uh, uh, integer declaration int i, you can only store one value at a time. You can say int i is equal to 10 or int i is equal to 20. So at no point you can store more than one value in any of these variables, right? So if there is a scenario where you would like to store multiple values in the same variable at the same time, how do you do it? The answer to that is arrays. So using arrays, you can achieve that. So basically arrays is nothing but a container which stores different values of the same data type for you. And the one condition we have is that whatever you store uh, in the array, all the values should be of the same data type. So it can be an array of integers or array of strings or an array of characters, but you can't store a integer and a character and a float, something like that, in a single array declaration. Right. So that's the condition we've got. Uh, so if you take an example of uh, roll numbers in this class, you want to store all the roll numbers. So for example, there are 10 students in the class, you will be storing roll numbers 1 through 10, 1 to 3, 4 to 10, in a particular variable called roll number. Right. You can do that using arrays. So when we talk about arrays, there are three main things we need to discuss. Array declaration, array construction, and array initialization. Let's come to the first step, array declaration. So the first two examples shows you de declaration of a single dimensional array. Let me talk about that. If you have to simply declare an integer, how would you do it? You just say int i, right? But there's something extra here when we talk about arrays. This brackets. So when you put these brackets after your variable name, it actually implies that this is nothing but an array and it's not a single integer with one value. It's an array of integers. Right. Again, the second example also the same. The only difference being that the brackets is placed after the data type declaration rather than after the variable declaration. And I would actually suggest the second example because this actually makes more sense. It says that this is an array of integers, right? So I would actually suggest you to use the second uh, example of declaration rather than the first. Now, if you have a look at the third example, it's somewhat different. You've got two brackets here instead of one brackets as opposed to the previous two examples. Why is it so? because this is a two-dimensional array, right? And the previous two are the single-dimensional array. So here, if you have a look at the figures we have on the right, the first diagram actually is a single-dimensional array where you have stored a number of integer values in a one-dimensional array. So your array can only grow in one dimension when you talk about single-dimensional arrays. But when you talk about two-dimensional arrays, your array can grow in two dimensions, right? Uh, you can, it can grow this side and it can grow this way as well. So if you want to uh, store values in a table-like structure with rows and columns, you can go for a double-direction, two-dimensional array. So based on your requirements, you either choose a single-dimensional or a two-dimensional array. But most of the times, many people would only need a single-dimensional array. Right? Okay, next. Array construction. So how do you construct an array? Using the new keyword. So I've told you earlier that whenever you use the new keyword, what does it mean? It means that you're creating an object on the heap. So that means arrays are created on the heap. So arrays resides on the heap, not on the stack. Right? So this how you create an construct an array. You say integer my array is equal to new of integer. So whatever type of data you're creating, whatever data type you're using, 
either integer or strings or characters, the same data type comes here after the main declaration. And you give a bracket and you give the number of values you want in that array. So if I'm if I want to store five values in that array, I'll have five here. So this is very important here. You need to specify what's the max length your array can hold. Okay. So if you say here if you declare it new int of five, then later you figure out that you want to store ten values into that into that uh, array, you won't be able to do it. So this is the max number of values you can store in your array. So it's always better to give 10 or 20 percent more uh, space than you actually require. Right? So say for example, you want to store 100 variables, you give a size of 110. Right? Similarly, for a two-dimensional array, you give the size as well. Okay? This is for array construction, now array initialization. So now that you have declared your array and you have constructed an array object on the heap, you will have to assign values to the variable, to the array. Right. So how do you do that? So you can basically assign values based on indexes. So here in the first example, you are creating a new array with five values in it. So it can hold five values. So how do you actually assign values at the first position, second position, third position, fourth position, fifth position? You use the index. So in a general scenario without arrays, if you're just using integers, you would simply say my array and you would say equal to, you get some values. But here you want to assign values to an array of integers, right? So you give the index in the brackets. So the index basically starts from zero and not from one. So the value in the first position would be my array of zero, right? So I just use a for loop and I assign a normal uh, natural numbers from zero to one, basically to my array integers. There is one more way you can assign values. You can initialize your array. If you see here, the last statement here, it actually does all three in one single line. It declares the array, it constructs the array, and it also initializes the array. And it, it initializes with these values, one, two, three, four, five. So when you are given this type of declaration, you don't really need to give a max value here. You just can put the actual values you want to store in the array. Right, so this is how your array representation will look. Okay. So I've created a new, so I've created a my array variable, which is nothing but an array of integers. Right, and this my array is going to reside on the stack. Right, and you have the actual array object on the heap, which has got values one, two, three, four, five, right, five integer values. So one thing here is um, you actually construct your array and you say new integer of 5. But what about the integers which are actually inside your array, what, what values are stored? They are actually defaulted with the default value if you don't provide any values to that. So if you hadn't done the initialization stuff, all the values in this array would be would have been zero 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 zero, right? If it's an integer, and if it's a string, it would have been none. Okay, so yeah, so that's about arrays. Now strings. So strings and arrays, you can say like conceptually it's similar. Arrays are nothing but it's a container which groups different values of the same data type, and strings is nothing but it's a group of characters, right? And again, strings also reside on the heap if you use the integers. So we'll, we'll just talk about that for a second. So there are two ways in which you can create strings. You can either directly assign it to a string literal 
or you can say new string abc there is one difference in these two declarations what's that let's see if you say new string abc as if discussed many times earlier whenever you use the new keyword a new object is going to be created on the table so a new object will be created on the heap in the new string and then it's up to the garbage collector to destroy that string destroy that string then it's not accessible anymore but in the second example we directly assign a literal value abc string literal value abc without using new so where will it stay will it stay on the stack will it stay on the heap so basically you've got a separate memory allocated for strings and that is called the string constraint pool okay so this string constraint pool is a memory structure where all the strings are stored we can say in that some ways arrays and strings are similar so as you see an array is nothing but a collection of uh, values of the same data type right and in a similar manner a string is nothing but a collection of characters right so if you have a look at uh, the ways in which you can create a string object uh, i've got two examples here example one says string my string one is called the new string abc so we've learned earlier that whenever you use the new keyword a new object is created on the heap so here a new string object is created on the heap with the value abc right so if you have a look at the second example it says string my string please for the abc here i'm not using any new keyword right i'm simply assigning this abc literal string literal to the value to the variable my string heap so where the value is being created is it going to create it on the stack or the heap or where so basically when you talk about strings in java you've got a totally different memory allocation for all the strings and that is a string constraint pool so all your strings in java are being stored on the string constraint pool okay so it creates an object abc string object abc in the pool and then it refers to the string object on the string constraint pool as i told you in the first example it creates a new object string object on the heap but since this is a string and all strings are created on the string constraint pool it also creates a new string object on the string constraint pool as well right so let's see what the difference between the string constraint pool and heap why why don't we simply store all the string values on the heap as well why do we have a separate string constraint pool for storing the string basically strings in java are being extensively used so you use strings a lot in java and since uh, there is a totally different uh, memory management uh, provided for strings and this string constraint pool is uh, what will be picture for efficient memory management for all the strings okay so let's take an example here so i'll take two scenarios now in the first scenario uh, both my string declarations will say my string my string one is called the new string abc my string two is called the new string abc and in the second scenario both the declarations would be my string one is called the abc my string two is called the abc let's take the first example where both the declarations are new string abc what would have happened if i say new string abc it's going to create a new string on the heap new string object on the heap and for the second declaration again it's going to create another object on the heap with the same value abc right so i'm going to have two string object on the heap with the same value abc but if i have both the declarations as my string one is called abc and my string two is called abc what would have happened is it would create only one string object on the string constraint pool and both will reference to the same object on the string constraint pool right so here we don't have two different objects but only one object okay so that's one of the reasons why uh, we've got separate uh, 
memory allocation for strings. Right. And they say that strings are immutable. What do you mean by that? Immutable means you cannot change the value of strings. So with Ray, I cannot really change the value of strings. Can't I say in later part of my program, can't I say my string two is equal to XYZ? Yes, you can. Then why is it called immutable? So basically whatever value is stored in this memory allocation for this string ABC, this value cannot be changed at this memory location. You can't really change this to XYZ on that particular memory allocation. So when you say, when you again reassign this to XYZ, what it's going to do is it's going to create a new string object with the value XYZ. Then you are going to be, this is going to point to this new string object created for the XYZ. But the value of this will not be changed. So it's going to create a new string object and point it to this. So this is how the assignment is done in strings. Now say for example, you already have ABC, right? And you want to, you at a later point of time, you say my string one is equal to A, B, C, D. So it's got a very different mechanism to actually assign values. So I have already a string A, B, C, right? So what it does is simply creates a string called D and it somehow clubs this A, B, C with D and concatenates it and sends the result back to the user. Right? So all this internal uh, logic is very complex, right? So we don't, we don't really want to care about that as well. So that is uh, how and why strings are called uh, immutable. So you've got even string buffers as well. So there are a certain differences between strings and string buffers. Like uh, string buffers are basically created on the heap and not, it's not created on the string constant pool. No objects are created on the string constant pool when you talk about string buffers. So you, you use string buffers most of, mostly when you have a large amount of data to be assigned, uh, string value to be assigned, or you are doing a lot of concatenations and stuff like that, right? Okay. So, so whenever you use strings, it's advisable not to use the unique keyword because unnecessarily you are going to create a new object on the heap. This is a list of most frequently used uh, methods and strings. Uh, caret says uh, uh, it says what character is present at uh, this particular index. Right again, the index again starts from zero for strings as well. Compare to you are comparing one string with another. Concat you are concatenating two strings. Equals checks whether two strings are equal or not. Index of checks what's the index of this particular character, right? You can have other overloaded methods like this index of as well. Length gives you the length, replace, replaces, and substring gives you the substring of whatever you provide there, the beginning and the end index. Right? So this is briefly about uh, strings and Java. Okay, construct 